A new day has dawned for Helldivers 2. Super Earth and its illustrious wisdom has finally decided that they should stop letting the lowest bidder make our weapons and ammunition, so that we might expedite our efforts to liberate our enemy souls from their earthly forms. This means we just got access to a whole heap of powerful weapons and combinations to make the enemies of humanity remember the taste of fear. My name is Commissar Kai. And today, instead of going over all the changes, I'm going to share with you all three incredibly powerful new weapon combinations that you can use to support your team. I was a bit worried that with all this extra firepower, we might not need to rely on each other as much. But I can assure y'all, that ain't the case. So strap yourselves in, feed your pet fish, and follow me. Let me show you what I've been cooking. Before we get into our first synergy, for today I grabbed up three more Helldivers that have either never done Super Helldive or are named Biscuit, who is my on-call low-level friend for when I want to chunk a newbie into Super Helldive. I do this to intentionally make the game more difficult so that I can be sure that a weapon or loadout performs at the level I want before I share it with y'all. I also do it because I enjoy kicking baby birds out of the nest and watching them either soar off on their own or faceplant into the ground. Either way, we're sure to have a great time and to stress test the crap out of our new weapon options. The first new combination we're going to look at is the Recoilless Rifle, Arc Blitzer, and Thermite Grenades. The Recoilless Rifle got a huge glow up and now one shots Behemoth and Bile Titans to the face, while also taking down Impalers in just two shots anywhere on their morbidly obese bodies. It can also take out Shrieker Nests and Spore Spewers with just a single shot, giving it a nice bit of extra utility in addition to popping those big targets. The only real downside is that we can't really use it against medium enemies for obvious reasons. It also isn't a very reliable source of stagger. So, despite the raw power it has, it still comes with some pretty significant downsides. To offset those, we're going to pair it with the Arc Blitzer. Arc weapons also got a huge boost across the board, being able to stun even chargers with just a few shots, stopping them dead in their tracks and setting us up nicely for a clean shot to their stupid face. This weapon also does not use ammo, meaning you can spam it as much as you like. Just be sure to look past your target so you don't zap one of your teammates. With its incredibly high stagger, infinite ammo, and effectiveness against both light and medium targets, this combination is a match made in heaven. But we can make it just a little bit better by adding the new president of grenades, the thermite grenade. Rapidly unseating the stun grenade is the best grenade in the game. Thermites will always kill a charger if you strap it to either their main body or their head. It should also take them down with a leg hit, but I did notice sometimes they survive. So strap it straight onto their shell and crack them open like a boiled peanut. They can also melt through a titan with just two to the head or severely weaken them with just one to the body. But they do tend to bounce off these bug equivalents of lifted pavement princesses, so throw with care. Basically, anything bigger than a tractor will keel over to just one or two of these 2500 degree Celsius can openers. This gives us options when it comes to taking down the biggest of bugs. Sometimes you're too pressured by swarms of warriors or packs of hunters to get a reload off for your recoilless. So instead, we just chunk one or two of these at the problem and it will quickly melt away. With just this core of weapons, the recoilless rifle, arc blitzer, and thermites, we already have an answer to any individual problem that might pop up against the bugs. We are also rocking quite a bit of utility through our Arc Blitzer's crowd control ability, which makes it super easy to step up and hold the line for our team whenever needed, in addition to our crazy anti-tank capabilities. We will probably want to bring the grenade pistol just so we don't have to waste precious thermites on bug holes, but I won't say that it's strictly required. You can also just depend on your team or use stratagems like the new and improved 500 kilogram bomb to fill this gap if you'd rather bring some else. Since we have all our bases covered with these weapons, we can get a little creative with the rest of our stratagems. Personally, I'd recommend the Orbital Gatlin Barrage, Orbital Napalm Barrage, and the Basic Machine Gun Sentry. We already have so much anti-tank in our arsenal that taking more starts to have diminishing returns. So focusing on crowd clearing stratagems with low cooldowns, or in the case of the Orbital Napalm, absolutely overwhelming firepower, ensures that there is never a situation where we lack an answer. It also lets us be flexible in our approach to team play. We can sit in the back and hunt those big bugs while our sentry and orbitals provide chaff clear for our team, or we can step up into the front line when needed and use our crowd control ability to make the bugs sit in our spicy rain while getting them off the backs of our teammates. For other options, we can swap out the machine gun sentry for the rocket sentry or heavy machine gun turret, or even the new and improved Tesla tower. 
Since we can instantly pop the biggest threats to our sentries with our recoilless rifle, it's pretty darn easy to protect them while they do their work. If you'd rather include a bit more utility in the loadout over raw damage, swap the Orbital Gatlin Barrage for the Orbital Gas Strike. The Orbital Gas Strike has been revamped and now does less damage, but it now blinds and slows enemies. This essentially makes the bugs roadblock themselves and gives your team time to either make some distance or layer on their own firepower. It also synergizes fantastically with either the Orbital Napalm Barrage or Eagle Napalm Strike, since both of these strategies have more powerful flames than something like incendiary grenades. If you like the sound of blind and confused bugs being grilled up while they're helpless, then consider liking the video. That one click is the best way to support the channel and manage democracy by helping spread the word of cooperation and team play to the rest of the fleet. To see more content like this, subscribe to the channel for new videos every week. I have one coming up on War Bonds that you're not going to want to miss. If you find yourself lacking for teammates, enlist in my platoon by clicking the Discord link in the description below. My commandos are some of the most active Helldivers in the fleet, and we all appreciate good teamwork and making new friends. Now, before we move on to our next big synergy, let's take a quick look at what happens when you bring all Super Hell Dive newbies into a game. Oh, my bad. <laughs> oh, man. No, damn it. I got rolling Sorry. holy into a bad spot. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna go around the side and start clearing out the bugs. Alright. Watch those arcs. Alright. Well, Your mind is too close. I just throw mine in yep. That's fine. Alright. Uh, we can get a resupply and get working on the uh, swore sh uh, shrieker nest from over here. Oh, hello, Charger. Okay. Damn it, crawl stop killing me. <laughs> Alright. That's like the fourth time. How many times? How many how many deaths have been to this? Alright, I'm gonna grab that. I swear to god, I'm not a socialist bot shooters. sympathizer. You do it again, I'm shooting you in the face. <laughs> if I do it again, I would deserve it. You know, I can't even be mad. I love them to death. Our next bit of hidden synergy is going to be pairing the arc thrower with thermite grenades and sentries. The arc thrower has been massively improved. It now arcs to more targets, has a much longer range, 35 meters to now 55 meters, and comes with a stun effect that will stop even a charger dead in its tracks with a single shot. Since it's an arc weapon, it also does not use ammo, so you can lay on the trigger as long as you need to encourage the bugs to move towards the light. It does decent damage and can kill any target the bugs have, albeit some more slowly than others. The main draw of this weapon is its crazy utility as a stagger machine. If you want to step up and hold the line for your team while they complete an objective or get into a better position, there is not a single weapon better suited for the job than the arc thrower. There's also no better weapon for accidentally killing your friends, so be sure you know what's behind whatever you're aiming at. It also excels as an anti-hunter weapon, so you can bring something like the explosive crossbow or eruptor for those bile spewers and bug holes. This also frees up your secondary, so you can bring something other than the grenade pistol for those those times where you quickly need to get a hunter off of your buddy without taking them out in the process. To capitalize on the stagger of this weapon, we're bringing, and you will hear me saying this a lot over the next month, thermite grenades. Being able to stagger a charger, slap a thermite on his head, and continue staggering them while the power of the sun melts through their brain and electricity arcs off their body to kill their friends is just incredibly satisfying. Like I mentioned earlier, they can also deal with Bile Titans and Impalers with just two grenades, but we will be bringing some extra AT in our stratagems just so we don't run out. Speaking of stratagems, we're also going to be making use of at least one sentry, the Rocket Sentry. The main downside of the Rocket Sentry against bugs is that it just doesn't stagger chargers, meaning it can easily get run over if left unattended. But with the rework to chargers and behemoths, the Rocket Sentry kills them and Bile Titans incredibly quickly, taking just three to five shots depending on the angle and the type of enemy. Even when it's not shooting tanky enemies, the rocket sentry puts in a ton of work by just firing high explosive rockets into dense packs of bugs. So that's our core synergy, the arc thrower, thermite grenades, and rocket sentry. I do recommend trying out either the explosive crossbow or the eruptor for primaries with this weapon, but it's not strictly necessary. Just make sure you have something to close bug holes. There's a couple different directions we can go from here. We can lean more into sentries by bringing the basic machine gun sentry for clearing out chaff while we work our magic on the bigger targets, and the orbital precision strike or the 500kg for an oh crap button when we need it. 
Or we can go with the you will stay in timeout method by bringing things like the eagle slash orbital napalm and the orbital Gatlin barrage instead of the sentries, along with your favorite that needs to die right now stratagem. This setup will be significantly weaker against heavily armored spawns, especially without the rocket sentry, but it does make up for it with supreme amounts of chaff clear and utility. Plus, we keep our ability to stun and melt chargers, so only really bile titans might give us some trouble. Since most Helldivers tend to bring a bunch of answers for these spindly losers, usually you can get away with just letting your team deal with them. This should give you a couple options to start out with when using the new Arc Thrower, and you can grow your own build from there. Before we get into the final synergy of this new patch, let's take a quick break to go over how to handle bug breaches when you're trying to do an objective. <laughs> Alright y'all, here's the rule for this match. Stick on my butt except for Arc Thrower Man. You have to stay in front of me. Yeah, right, I did get here, a breach. I'm just going to explain a little bit what I'm thinking about. I'm going to go a little in-game commentary. So what we're doing is we're getting the Bug Breach and the Super Nest to come at us in the same direction. So the Super Nest entrance is here, so we want to be like right over here. Alright. And then I'm going to call in my H&G emplacement, and I'm going to throw an Orbital Napalm back where that Bug Breach came from. Sounds I want, good. I want y'all to go that way and start looking for bug holes, especially you, Biscuit, right. with your auto cannon. Arc thrower man, can you stay with me? Yep. Look for that support charger. There he is. I got him. Parkour! Parkour! Let me know if y'all need help in there, alright? Right. Our last combination is going to be pretty simple since you can slot it into dang near any loadout. That being the HMG emplacement paired with the new orbital gas strike. This might sound like a strange combo at first, but given how strong the new crowd control effect of the gas strike can be, and the changes to heavily armored enemies which lets them take damage from the HMG turret, this combination of stratagems just becomes crazy strong. I put this one last since it's just two stratagems and can really fit into any loadout on either bots or bugs. It's particularly effective against the bots due to how fast the HMG turret shreds hulks and devastators. But against the bugs, it's no slouch either. It's a great way to clog up a corridor with the bodies of our foes, or to hold down a bug breach while your team gets on an objective. There's a ton of different possibilities with this combo, but I do recommend taking one of the following if you're using it against the bugs. The Spear, Recoilless Rifle, Quasar, EATs, and or the Commando. Taking some form of quick anti-tank with this setup protects you from the one thing that can really trouble you while you spray round after round in the name of freedom, Bile Titans. Having a quick answer for a Titan or a Charger that just gets a little too close really lets you stand your ground and fight against overwhelming odds. But if you're paired up with a teammate, you can always outsource keeping you safe to them. If you're running in a quick play lobby, you'll want to strongly consider taking one of those anti-tank options, since this level of coordination, while it can happen, should not be expected when playing with random players. Your primary, secondary, and grenades are all up to you but I would suggest bringing a primary with some stagger to keep the gribblies off your turret. I'd also recommend bringing something to deal with bile spewers, be it an orbital Gatlin barrage, grenade pistol, or impact grenades. I'm gonna let y'all play with this one instead of giving you a full loadout, so let me know what you can come up with. That's all I have for y'all today, so until next time, this is Commissar Kai, signing out.